All right, we bring in Thomas Fessler here from Disclosure Tonight YouTube channel. Thomas Fessler hanging on out with us. And, and Tom, there was kind of some big news that I wanted to talk to you about, and this will pretty much eat up the entire time. And this is a, a big debate happened between the Galileo Project's Avi Loeb and members of SETI. I mean, this was, uh, for people who don't know what SETI is, it's a search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And this is a, a, a team of scientists that is set up by NASA, I believe, as part of a NASA program to look for signals and any type of life formations out in space. And for 40 plus years, they found nothing. Zero, zilch, nada, whatever zero you want to put on there, they found nothing. That we know of. So I'm going to let you take it away here. What happened? Well, the, there was a, a great, you know, there was a presentation that went on today from SETI. And for, you know, in that, you know, basic long presentation, they came at it from a real amateurish kind of a uh, view of it. They clearly didn't do a lot of research with regards to the phenomena or even current events of what had been going on between the United States and Russia with their current hypersonic missile tests. And at the end of it, it, it was a, a clear, you know, uh, putting the palm out, asking for money, trying to say that, yeah, they need to upgrade their imaging and different stuff that they have, but it's 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 more of a play for finance than it is for a play to go ahead and recognize something because for the longest time they've been saying we have to look up out there in deep space you know but reality is it's down there it's on the planet and and that's the problem so it's it's an interesting situation to take the least what's your take on it well, my take is this uh you know i I think there's a lot of ignorance that comes along with it. All of these government programs, they don't ever bring facts to the table. They only bring begging, begging for money. We can't do it because we don't have enough money. We can't do it because we don't have enough technology. We can't do it because we don't have the right people. You've had 40 years to find something. How can people around the world be seeing these anomalous objects? How can astronauts sitting on the International Space Station see craft and their takes are ignored by groups like SETI? Thomas, yeah. it sounds absolutely incredulous. Yeah. Um, now, granted, they did have some good panelists to come in and answer some of the questions, but even some of them, because their affiliations with government agencies like NASA, that are all tied up underneath uh, the broad restrictions put in place by Susan Go from the Department of Defense. When there's things that they could talk about and possibly answer on, they either had a puss, uh, they either had a, had a pass on, or they had to, you know, give an answer that was a lot less from from what they know. Because honestly, it's like when they brought up the uh, the opportunity and different things to talk about, you know, about getting real reports from airline pilots neither of the panelists including robbie from nasa who actually knows is good friends with ted i mean not good friends but is a you know has been meeting with ted rowe from narcap and where they've documented you know reports from pilots interacting with uap that are credible reports going back over 100 years so you just have to look back and you listen to some of the questions the the how they were framed but even just some of the answers it's you know there, there are good people that were there but it, it's not going to be people who are going to be able to give you the, the full big picture. But again, give me the money. Give us the money. But they don't even know where to find the stuff. They think that they can just go ahead and put satellite, you know, additional imaging and replace their imaging stuff at their existing sites. Well, here's the thing. How often are UFOs being cited over <laughs> facilities that are, you know, for observations? Probably not a lot. Do we have a lot? You know, are there some that are over military sites, that's just that's just bias. They're all over the place. It's a worldwide phenomenon. And clearly they're not connected in an understanding of where ufology is today, not just ufology itself. It's it's the, the reality of the science and the observation and being able to know, have an idea of they, you know, they're no different than 
other living creatures where they have patterns that they follow. They have different things that they kind of go through on a regular basis. So if you know different places of where you can observe them based on paths and different things that they do. And there's sites like that in Hawaii and the America Southwest in, and Brazil and Chile and Peru and Italy, all over the world, Australia. And it's just, you know, being connected within that community observers, but it seems like they're just still out in space. Thomas, one of the things that I also noted was that Avi Loeb really got defensive from a scientific point of view of members of SETI putting down the UFO community, calling it pseudoscience, and basically saying words and stories that really can't be trusted by the scientific community. And Avi Loeb really seemed to take offense to that. Well, who wouldn't be? I mean, Avi Loeb is trying to, uh, if you would say approach this from a very scientific uh, perspective. He, he's, he's very knowledgeable. He has many degrees. He heads up departments at, at Stanford. And Harvard. you know Harvard. he's been practicing and postulating and observing and seeing where this is going on a very high level for a long period of time. So think of who he is, the network of all the people that he's working with. He's got some gems of information that have been coming to him that help him at least assess where it is. And if you've got someone, again, who's been focusing on looking up out there, not in the reality of where it really is, Try, going you know, going and, and being critical. I mean, they're even asking tonight, so you're going to go ahead and start looking for this stuff. How long are you going to let this program you know, go ahead and run for before we go ahead and bring it to an end? Because you know, look at the Conan report and when they brought that to an end, and it was like it was over a period of time, versus approaching this saying, wow, we have a whole nother area of science, of exploration, of understanding ahead of us, but they want to run like chickens. No, it's true. And, you know, I think it also shows the ignorance that we are seeing at members of the scientific community who are not believing Look, you don't have to believe me. I'm a nobody in this field. Oh, yeah. You're an experiencer. I'm an experiencer. Yeah. But in the end, we're nobodies. Okay? But when when you are literally dumping on pilots, whether they're airline pilots, whether they're civilian pilots, whether they're, they're fighter pilots, and claiming that they're not seeing UFOs, okay? <laughs> Even though the evidence is pointing towards that. The last time I checked, most pilots, if not all of them, are pretty well schooled in knowing their surroundings, knowing what is on their radar, knowing where birds are, knowing where where other airplanes and other craft are in the sky. They're pretty observant. And then you get the astronauts, yeah, like the Russian astronaut about a year ago who literally photographed a, a flying triangle yeah. in the sky. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. That you got to remember, SETI is used to looking at a lot of data and, and they're used to finding nothing. So when people are actually making results, they're very, they're looking at it in a wrong way because they're so programmed to be able to look at all this stuff and say, look, it's nothing. Look, it's nothing. Look, it's nothing. So when people are seeing things, they're used to saying, look, it's nothing. It's got to be. It's got to be a, a bias coming from the agency that should have been having its eyes open and ears open on a global basis, but they had a very narrow vision of what they could possibly look for. And I, and I hear you on that. But to me, doesn't it kind of hurt Avi Loeb's argument where he is arguing with SETI about their so-called zero information that they have received over 40 years, yet he takes the biggest skeptic of them all in a gentleman named Seth Stoshak and adds him to the Galileo Project team where Seth Stoshak has been an absolute thorn in ufology's side for the last 25 years. Yeah. I've seen other, uh, even uh, YouTube channels go ahead and bring other skeptics on their side just to go ahead and quiet, 
quiet them down. So sometimes there's an opportunity they they'll do that, but also in, the, in their opportunity, Seth is knows he he's approaching this from the from the ability to go ahead and call anything out. So if they're if they're showing him bringing it behind the scenes and showing him the real data, what better of a way to go ahead and get a person who can understand the data? Yes. If you're hearing a dog in the background, right, that, let me get the get taken. That's off. okay. But your dog is what? 17 years old? Yeah, she's 17. Yeah, she has every right to to be making noise at this time of night. I, I'm okay with that. And I know our radio audience will be okay with that as well. But, you know, with SETI being a part of NASA's programs, and now you have SETI still in denial, yet the new NASA head, Bill Nelson, is talking about UFOs and potential extraterrestrial life that NASA now needs to be looking for. Does SETI even know what their bosses are talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Just uh, Bill Nelson from uh, NASA reminds me of an Amway salesman. Just the way he looks and the way he talks. There's like he's going to keep on talking about something, and eventually maybe he's going to say something, but he's never still going to be clear about what the heck he's talking about until, you know, a lot longer down the road. It's just... NASA has been, you know, let, let's be specu speculative. I'm, I mean, I like to be realistic as I can, but from my point of view, NASA has been covering shit up for, uh, sorry, has been covering things up for a very, very long time. Um, yeah, write that down. <laughs> he, and they've been prolifically, basically keeping this away from the public. Anytime things were going on on the space station, where they were that all something would start coming into view and they immediately would go ahead and cut the view to another camera. We saw them doing that not so much at the beginning, but later on with the shuttle as well. So they've had a history of monitoring for what will go out there in the public, what we're allowed to see, and what they're gonna allow, you know, to get out. So they've been in a very tight control of it. I mean. So SETI is you've got someone who's been trying to find something and can't find anything. And then you've got the agency who's acting like we don't know anything, but we actually know a lot. It's two different and, words, but they're both uh, majorly fractured. Well, and that's what I say. We don't know what SETI has found or not found. That's the problem. We don't know. We can assume, if we take their word at it, that they found nothing for four decades. That's a good now, approach. Now, if we look at NASA with Bill Nelson, okay, we're hearing that they're just learning about these UFOs that are flying in the sky because he heard from Navy fighter pilots. Oh, my God. Right? Well, have you talked to your astronauts? Hey, talk to Gordon Cooper. Have you talked to – you know, there, there were so many of these people who – uh, our astronauts who went and talked in front of the UN in front of different bodies with respect to the situation. And they're just like, you know, they want to plug their ears. You know, I can see, you know, when Buzz Aldrin punched that guy in the face who said, you never went to the moon. I do believe we went to the moon. I really do believe we did, but I do not believe for a fact that they did not see anything. You yeah. know, I want Bill Nelson. You know what I want to ask Bill Nelson? Play us the tape, the secured tape of Neil Armstrong, where he allegedly, and many people from NASA have, have quoted this, where he allegedly said, they are here, they are on the hill, and they are watching us. That's what we need. And if Bill Nelson, former astronaut as well, is that ignorant not to bring things like that up, or confirm or deny Donna Hare's position of scrubbing photos of bases and and craft in the sky? Yeah, you know, someone posted a picture up before it and it actually came back from a NASA server and it was at, of the moon. They were like, what's wrong with this picture, right? And everyone is going and looking and it's like, oh, wow, I see the shape of this or I see a shape of a desk or a woman by a desk and a door and something in the in like in the blackness of space. So I went and I took the image and I just did some adjustments on it with brightness and contrast and something with the levels. And all of a sudden you could see, yeah, you could kind of see those shapes because you can still see the brush strokes. So what the hell were they going? And sorry, I did it again. What the heck are they going and brushing out? That's the big thing. 
Thomas, thank you so much for filling in for John Hudson on the Unbiased UFO Report. We really do appreciate it, and uh, we want our people to also go to Thomas Fessler's YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. He is always on two hours before Spaced Out Radio. Good lead up to us. Thank you so much for your time, Thomas.